very good evening to all of you and i welcome all of you to this extremely super special episode of eclectica the different news because as you can see on screen i have dr paul dismonsloy the founder and ceo of oss diagnostics usa with me uh, whatever you see i speak about saliva or i talk about saliva or do something on saliva uh, dr paul has been my constant support friend philosopher and guide i welcome dr paul uh, thank you so much for joining today at eclectica i know it's ex- very very early morning there thank you so much for accepting my invitation no problem it's my pleasure actually i uh, i love doing these things so uh, and to help and support any of the efforts that you're doing and support us alive around the world which is quite extensive as well <laughs> thank you and to for our audience let me just introduce and you you will understand today who i have as my guest so dr sloy as i already mentioned is the founder and owner of oss diagnostic corporation and its subsidiary company bamberg marsh LLC founded in 2002 each are pioneers in the area of oral fluid diagnostics and testing dr sloy's background is in organic chemistry after being awarded his doctorate from the university of newcastle upon tyne uk he spent several years as a post doctoral fellow in canada then 5 years in the pharmaceutical industry with sterling drug he has over 32 years of experience in the clinical diagnostic and pharmaceutical industries combined over the years he has held positions as director of international sales and chief operating officer and vice president of sales and marketing for companies that were the original pioneers in the development of saliva diagnostic rapid tests for infectious diseases and oral fluid collection devices he has extensive experience in structuring strategic alliances and license agreements with both startup and fortune 500 companies dr sloy has 30 publications in peer reviewed journals 15 issued patents 12 filed patent application and he has made a number of oral presentations at key scientific symposia on a variety of subjects including hiv diagnosis nucleic acid testing the status of oral fluid testing the japanese healthcare business and thyrotropin receptor antibody assays for the diagnosis of graves disease dr sloy is the founder and co-organizer of the north american saliva symposium nas and is a director of a teaching college in kampala uganda and to not to uh, and i cannot end this introduction without mentioning that with extensive support from dr sloy dr paul uh, we organized together the international saliva summit of india uh, in india <laughs> salsi so thank you for coming here and today i have a lot of questions to ask you and uh, i think with your answers the entire audience will get enlightened thank you thank you so dr paul my first question to you is that uh, uh, because we know your extensive academic and professional background so what was your inspiration behind getting into the field of saliva specifically well <laughs> you kind of fall into things you know, my my life if i look back on my life is kind of a a lot of twists and turns i never expected to you know to actually get a phd in the first place i never expected to be a, a postdoctoral fellow i never expected to leave the united kingdom which was my home but you know just fortune has it that you have these different pathways in life and there's a fork in the road and you choose the one that you think is the most appropriate for you and that's kind of what I've done throughout my career so I was actually working for a company in Minneapolis Minnesota uh which is in the Midwest part of the United States in the diagnostics business and I now was headhunted by a company here in Vancouver Washington called Saliva Diagnostic Systems one of the pioneers that you mentioned there earlier and they were just a startup at the time and uh you know them and the the company Orisure Technologies which is now uh very much the market leader with sales of about 300 million dollars those those two were both in the very same area so i actually 
was headhunted to saliva diagnostic systems, became the chief operating officer in a very short space of time. They kind of ran out of money a little bit. And so I moved to Orishur just across the river, which is about, you know, 20 miles or something like that. And, uh, you know, I helped license the peptides for the or a quick HIV test, which is the only HIV test that's over the counter now. So you can literally go to a pharmacy, buy an HIV test that uses saliva, test yourself, and determine whether you're HIV positive or not. Um, and I also sold the very first order to the Centers for Disease Control back in the year 2000 while I was with Orishur. And that was for about 250,000 units that went into 15 different African countries. So, you know, they were the pioneers and they still are the pioneers. And I kind of took that model. And eventually, you know, when Orishur, Orishur was actually called Epitope at the time I joined them. And they became Orishur while I was with the company when they bought another company called STC. At that time, we had two facilities, one in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, one in Beaverton, Oregon. And the company chose to move everybody to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And I just love the West Coast. I'm not kind of an East Coast person. So I, I did not want to make the move. In fact, most people stayed uh, and, and found other employment. At that time, I founded Oasis Diagnostics in June 2002. So as I said, it's kind of twist and turns. But that's that's how I got into it. And ever since then, with you know, it's been three companies over 28 years, I think now, um, you know, I've been involved in, in saliva diagnostics. That is amazing. I mean, <clears throat> really, it is so fascinating. And I understand that. Uh, thank you that you did OSIS. Otherwise, <laughs> we wouldn't have been connected. <laughs> thank you. Thank right. you, you did OSIS. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so uh, Dr. Paul, like you are a visionary in this field. So as a visionary in this field of saliva, how do you see the future of disease diagnostics with saliva? Yeah, I, I kind of start by going backwards in time. If you look at the, the way that saliva diagnostics was back in 1996 when I joined SDS, Saliva Diagnostic Systems, it was it was really difficult to you know we were developing an HIV test that used saliva very similar to what Aura Show was doing. We had saliva collection kits that we used for HIV diagnosis, but the the mentality of of people customers was that saliva is an inferior bodily fluid. Blood is is the way to go. Tissue if you're doing cancer diagnostics, urine sometimes for urinalysis, uh, but saliva was kind of the poor relation. So over the years, you know, and that it's it's been very interesting to watch the kind of progression. But in 2015 and a little bit earlier, when 23andMe got into saliva diagnostics, that's when people began to kind of sit up and say, maybe maybe there is something in this particular bodily fluid that can be useful. And there was several things kind of happening at the same time. It was really difficult to to do things like lateral flow, you know, rapid point of care testing uh, in saliva for a number of reasons. Saliva is a very dirty fluid and you have to literally clean it up to make sure that, you know, you can actually get uh, non-specific binding removed from the from the product. Manufacturing was very difficult in those days, you know, on a, on a lot to lot basis. It was very difficult for companies to be able to manufacture things consistently. And then, the, the third and most important thing probably is that, you know, saliva, biomarkers in saliva are typically present in a lot lower concentrations than they are in blood or urine or other bodily fluids. So therefore, in order to be able to detect those biomarkers, you need a more sensitive technology. And those sensitive technologies are now available, whereas back in, you know, 1996, they weren't. So technologies like next generation sequencing, for instance, um, lateral flow that uses fluorescence to quantify biomarkers that goes down much lower limits of detection. And the manufacturing is now in place to, to manufacture large volumes of you know lateral flow tests, which is why you see a lot of COVID-19 antigen tests now on the market. Then, the, then you know, there's several other steps along the way, but I know we don't have a, a huge amount of time. But I guess the next real uh, point in time where things really suffered an inflection was was the COVID-19 pandemic when in the beginning everybody's using nasopharyngeal swabs, oropharyngeal swabs, nasal swabs, etc. But in March 2020, as you well know, there was a, a gross shortage of swab materials. There was a lot yes. of companies were given money to just generate new manufacturing facilities to to meet the demand for that. But at that point in time, people 
had already began looking at saliva, but then all of a sudden there was a mass, you know, evaluation of saliva. And, you know, I think there are now maybe 30 tests that are uh, EUA approved by the FDA for saliva. Some of them are PCR tests. Uh, some of them are real, you know, real-time lamp tests. But still, there is no saliva antigen test approved. So, you know, the FDA is still working on the first one of those. But that really set the, the stage. Now everybody, everybody, including you know the, the local community yourself anybody in the street knows what a what a, an antigen test is everybody knows what a real time pcr test was before the pandemic nobody knew what these things were so now the people who take the health into their own hands uh, you know are basically asking for these types of things so i think that's kind of the the main thing and i've read recently and you've probably seen these yourselves little articles that come out and said Saliva really is the way to go. It's the wave of the future. So, you know, the forecasts are that it's going to begin to exponentially begin to, you know, become the, the, the main fluid of buyer choice, really. Right, because uh, very recently uh, it has been in the news, uh, particularly in Indian context also, that uh, because now December is a diabetic uh, uh, diabetes awareness month it is kind of celebrated everywhere so i think again uh, saliva diagnostics in that that aspect of uh, detecting diabetes is also uh, is is also a revolutionary move that way like uh, like as you said we keep seeing all these information coming out which is really uh, very motivating and inspirational and i think uh, non invasive uh, diagnostics is the way to go at least for uh, if not for every disease, but uh, maybe most of the chronic diseases. Yeah, well, I think, you know, as a sneak preview for, you know, my presentation at Salsi, I will talk mm -hmm. about some of the newer applications and some of the more exciting things that, that help us realize that all of a sudden, you know, we can you know, look at diabetes in saliva, we can look at cancer in, in saliva, mm -hmm. we can look at a lot of different things in saliva. So, that's what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> oh, uh, we are all excited to listen to you at Salsi 23. <laughs> Anyways, well, so uh, so uh, Dr. Paul, the healthcare fraternity, uh, to be very honest, is still yet to explore the vast field of saliva diagnostics. So what do you think are the three most important reasons for this? Well, there are the three things that I just said that are probably the most important, but there are others. Mm -hmm. So I'll I'll elaborate on those. So firstly, uh, you know the 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 ability to to be able to detect molecules in in small concentrations in saliva that that's important. Having the technologies that can do that, the next generation sequences of this world, you know, lamp, uh, PCR, etc. Uh, the manufacturability of these things. And probably one that's not part of that three that's really important is kind of a change in mindset. Um, if you look at the, the recent generations, like the millennials, for instance, they're much more uh, interested in their own health care. And right. they're willing to look at different options for, you know, for testing. Uh, you know, this is not a slant on, on my generation or anything like that, but they were brought up in a generation where blood was everything. You measured everything in blood. You detect everything in blood. Saliva was was kind of, as I mentioned earlier, the poor relation. And there's still that mindset in the older generation, whereas the newer generation coming in, you know, they're willing to look at new options. And I think, you know, as as this generation becomes CEOs, um, the companies that are actually developing tests will actually look at that. And, you know, one of the things that I do as a CEO of my company looking for partnerships and you know where where i would call ourselves a collaborative company we want to collaborate with as many companies as we can you know we have collection tools that can collect the best possible samples for saliva but we don't have the assays that are downstream so it's our you know it's our job to best we find partners that have tests maybe saliva covid antigen tests maybe a saliva uh, cancer test for you know for BRCA1 or BRCA2 or something like that so you know we have to identify companies that might might be on the beginning stages they might be startup companies and right. still the mindset might be you know let's develop a blood test so you see a press release from that company that says company x just got 50 million dollars to develop a, a test for cancer and you know a, they'll say in the press release a blood test for cancer you know and every time i see blood test i say why can't it be saliva so you know i'll contact <laughs> that company and say Hey, are you interested? You know, saliva can be just as important as 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 Absolutely. blood. So, and especially as it's, 
more amenable for the customer. You know, it's collectible at home, so you don't have to go down to a laboratory. You don't have to have mm. a full to car- collect the sample for you. You have your own privacy. So, you know, I think that's kind of another motivation for people looking at that. Now, all of a sudden, they're talking about, you know, not just sal- saliva COVID, but COVID, flu A, flu B, RSV, you know, and S pneumonia, etc. Lots and lots of different things. So the mentality is certainly changing, I think. Absolutely. And I think and other uh, very interesting areas that where even saliva uh, comes into play, like, uh, like, uh, like how, how when I came into this world of saliva more closely with you, and I came to know about all the fascinating scientists who are working all over the world, particularly the sports medicine, uh, like Dr. Manuel works on it, uh, and, uh, and even the environmental toxicity, the neurodegenerative diseases, I think, I think we can't stop speaking about the applications of saliva. <laughs> right. And I yeah. think what we try to do, you know, as organizers of, of a symposium is to try and get a really good cross section, yes. you know, with Dr. Wiley talking about COVID-19 and Manuel talking about the sports medicine area, you know, and people talking about just general salivary health, you know, oral health. And, you know, we, we're trying to bring together people that can, maybe express exactly where saliva is and saliva is going in a, in a kind of non-commercial way. Correct. Absolutely. I agree with you completely on this. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Dr. Paul, I am sure that uh, the the way you have taken the path and the way you are, uh, I mean, wherever you stand today, it has been a path where you ha- there had been uh, quite a lot of challenges, I'm sure about it. So my question is that, uh, what were the greatest challenges you faced in your journey in the field of saliva to date? And a related one is that how did you solve them? Because I think we will get a lot of inspiration from this answer. Well, I think, you know, when, when I worked for Orasure and Saliva Di- Diagnostic Systems, they had wonderful tools and they still have wonderful tools. My 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 goal you know, when I founded my own company was to was to try and develop tools that might fill in the gaps that they didn't have, you know, certain niches in the marketplace, like uh, collection devices for babies, for instance, collection devices for saliva from animals, etc. And, you know, the, the challenge was meeting the unique attributes that are necessary for collection from babies. Now, it's not it's not very easy to collect a sample from an infant, uh, you know, or a newborn or something like that, uh, or from a large animal for that matter, you know. Uh, but, Absolutely. you know, so far we've, we've, we've been successful. I think part of the issue is has been manufacturability of some of these things. You know, we, we when we developed the products, we tried to patent them so that, that we have some intellectual property protection uh, in the marketplace. And, you know, certain designs, when you actually... You, you look at the design that you've come up with uh, it, on paper and it looks great. And then when you actually do the, the prototyping and you put it together, certain things happen. One of the things that we had to overcome, and this is just a specific example, is you know some of our devices use an absorbent pad to collect saliva. The saliva is squeezed out of the pad into an Eppendorf tube or into an assay uh, and you, you, know, you squeeze the sample downward. Well, the first things that we we noticed was that, you know, there's there's certain pressure involved in collection of the the saliva. So when you actually push the sample down, some saliva comes up the other way. And we call that we call that blow by and we had to solve that. And it took six months to solve that problem, you know, and it and it it, it, at the end in the end it worked out. It was either just the geometry of the device, the O-rings that were used in the device, etc. Um, so that's that's one of the things. I think the second thing is the regulatory challenges. We became a Radex company, and for people's benefit, the Radex is the, the rapid acceleration of diagnostics program that was implemented by President Trump when he was in office. And the idea was right at the beginning of the pandemic, they needed to, to develop as many tests as possible to, to have people test it. So, you know, he gave about half a billion, was it 500 million, half a billion dollars. A lot of companies got money out of that in order to develop diagnostic tests for COVID. You know, our company was one of two companies that actually received money to be a collection company that could collect the saliva before the diagnostic test. And, you know, we got our contract from the NIH back in February 2021. And we're working with multiple companies that have gone through uh, what you call EUA, emergency use authorization for the di- diagnostic test for COVID in the United States. And as I mentioned earlier, none of the saliva kits for antigen are approved by the FDA. And we have three or four that we're working with 
And that's kind of the challenge. It's taken way too long to actually get through the FDA process. And right. part of that, uh, and this is another challenge, and it maybe goes back to, you know, one of the, the, the challenges that, that we have faced and all companies face is the fact that the FDA is not conversant with saliva. You know, blood, they're much more conversant with blood. And, you know, to me, you have a blood tube and you can diagnose anything with that blood tube. That blood tube doesn't require a, a different FDA approval every time you go back with a different diagnostic test. In the case of saliva, the FDA is still assessing the, you know, the abilities of saliva. So in that, that case, every time you develop a test, whether it be with company A or company B, whether it be for saliva COVID testing or hepatitis C testing or you know, diabetes testing, you have to go through a separate FDA approval, which means it's very, very expensive. So that's a big challenge. That's a big challenge. I think the mindset of the FDA is changing, and I think yeah. it still needs to change a little bit more. But you know that that that's been definitely a big challenge. Yeah, I think it is. It is a very big challenge because you have to constantly develop and also uh, push this across them, and otherwise you cannot bring it to the benefit of the uh, people. So I think, and and the time taken is long that is the that is the pain part i think uh, but i think it's just a matter of time and and the way you have taken the journey to get uh, forward i think it's all brighter days ahead with saliva at least well uh, dr paul uh, we would really like to know more about oasis diagnostics and your vision with this pioneer company so I really don't want this you know, uh, interview to be commercial, but just to give you an, an overview, the, I mean, the idea of founding Oasis in the first place, as I mentioned earlier, was to de develop as many technologies as possible. So you know, over the course of the 20 years uh, that we've been in business, we've developed tools for uh, collection of saliva from babies, collection of saliva from you know, human beings, adults, co you know, collection devices for large and small animals, for geriatrics. And we have devices that are specific for drug testing. We have devices that are specific for collecting cell-free samples from saliva. So you can diagnose things like cancer. So we find circulating tumor DNA and exosomes in the saliva without the extraneous material, the, the interfering substances that can cause you downstream problems. You know, we have devices that are used for um, HPV, for instance, that are not oral, they're actually vaginal specimen collection, a device that we have called Fem Collect. And, you know, we have large volume saliva collection devices. So we tried to, try to cover the gamut of different testing modalities, if you like. We have other devices that are still in, in development. So, you know, we always try to innovate, but the overall goal is to make sure that, you know, we improve patient care and hopefully we, we save lives uh, into the process. We also have the other, we have two two divisions within the company. One is the present, which is the saliva collection kits that are now commercially available. People can buy them uh, immediately. And then we have the future of the company, which I call the you know the the point of care testing platform that we developed called Liam and Verify. Liam is a reading unit that reads fluorescence. Verify is a, a dual cartridge, just dual strip system that can detect molecules in saliva in real time in fully quantitative fashion. So we use fluorescence, we collect the sample using one of our devices, it's introduced into a couple of wells, and then you know the saliva runs over a course of 20 minutes, and then after 20 minutes, you insert the cartridge into a reader, and you can basically tell how you know stressed somebody is by their cortisol level, or you know what their testosterone level is. And yeah, that's a platform technology that could be developed for a lot of different things. And that's kind of the goal of the company moving forward is to develop you know, the disease-based detection uh, at the point of care in 20 minutes. So, you know, currently we're developing a test for periodontitis that will be used in a, in a dental office and hopefully give you results in 10 to 15 minutes. You know, Fantastic. we're developing a test for a concussion uh, with a very yeah. famous person that I'm not allowed to mention, but, you know, it, it, will, it will look at two different concussion biomarkers. And there's also uh, other things that we're working on with malaria, for instance, and, you know, I think anything is possible if you have to buy a markers. So, you know, that platform is, is licensable. So if somebody's interested right. in developing tests and that's the other thing, as I said, we can't do it alone. So we look for yeah. other companies that might be interested and, you know, we partner with those companies. So, yeah, that, I think that's kind of uh, Oasis in a nutshell. You know, we have large scale manufacturing 
uh, of our devices under the RADEX program. We got uh, some money that was you know, uh, given by the National Institute of Health to scale up production. And we're currently at a production of about 2 million units a month for uh, our Supercell and PureCell devices under the RADEX program. So you know, we're just waiting for the EUAs to happen so that, you know, that, that we can provide these tools to uh, as many people as possible. Right, right. That is fascinating to know about the, uh, you know, the depth and uh, breadth and the length of OSIS. And I think uh, the, the, your vision to uh, bring out point of care technologies or detections uh, in different fields uh, with saliva, uh, I think that that is just going to happen very, very soon with time. Uh, so uh, now to a very interesting and favorite question of mine that what made you initiate the global event of the North American Saliva Symposium or favoritely we call it as NAS? Okay, well, I'm not going to claim responsibility for that. I'll tell you how it happened. Um, I, I used to go to a meeting in Europe, and uh, it was it, it, it's called the um, 11th, uh, I think they're now up to the 12th uh, European Union Saliva Symposium, and it was organized by a group in the Netherlands, which are very, very active saliva group called ACTA, A-C-T-A, uh, and the website is acta.nl. Um, the, the organizer, Toon Lichtenberg, um, I used to go there, uh, I think I've been to three or four, and I met Jill Marin, Dr. Marin, Jill Marin from Brown's University uh, at one of these. And, you know, we, we were talking, we were collaborating on, on a project, and Jill, Jill mentioned to me, you know, because this, this event was a, a kind of triennial event, so it was every three years. And, you know, we yeah. said, uh, you know, it would be really nice, and it was Jill's idea, it would be really nice if we had a symposium in the, United States, w would you like to help me organize one? So I, you know, me, because I was involved heavily in saliva and I, saliva is my world, I said, absolutely. So, you know, we, we combined forces on the first one, which was held in Boston in 2014. And then we held it every year up till 2018. Uh, and then the pandemic basically struck. But, um, you know, Jill has always been involved, but literally we took over the organization after the first year because, um, you know, Jill's a very busy, you know, researcher developing new technologies and publishing papers and stuff like that, but has always been you know, very supportive of what we've done. And, you know, we're very lucky that we've we've actually spread this meeting around the world. Salsi just being one of them. We've had uh, four, I believe, in Australia, one in China uh, as well. So and I think, Jill, I was sick. I didn't make it to the China one, but I did present over the uh, Internet. But I believe Jill made it out to the the uh, the Chinese uh, symposium that was in Guangzhou, China as well. So, you know, the idea is to have more of these things. We've talked to people in Italy who are hoping to have one next year. And then also uh, South Africa is the, the next venue after that. That's fantastic. I think the more uh, saliva, the word of saliva spreads and I think we find out more interesting people and this is a very good way of community building which which I uh, which I completely love and I am into the game with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so in that context, uh, uh, Dr. Paul, um, please share your experience and thoughts on International Saliva Summit of India, Salsi. I mean, I think we also started in a very, very interesting way. So maybe if you share your experience, it will be more funnier and more inspirational to hear. Well, I mean, first of all, I want to just say that you are... For you know the country of India, you are certainly an, an inspiration. You you are fully energized. Uh, you know the idea of I don't know how we actually formed this. Maybe <laughs> your maybe your recollection is better, but I know that we were talking about you know the world of saliva and how we can introduce the world of saliva to to the country of India. And uh, you know your energy and your enthusiasm and actually you know making saliva become. Uh, a tool of choice around the world you know, has been exemplary. And uh, I think when, whatever the reason it was, you know, immediately I kind of jumped, jumped in and said, yeah, let's, let's, let's do this thing. And, you know, this is our fifth annual Salsi meeting. I attended the first one in person. It was wonderful. Uh, a lot of fantastic speakers. And I think that's another thing you do is bring, bring, you know, together with my support, of course, because, you know, a lot yes. of the company, a lot of the people that, that speak are, are personal friends or, you know, colleagues or collaborators Absolutely. Uh, to put together 
international speakers as well as local speakers. And, uh, you know, I think we talked to the dental colleges in, in Chennai, uh, yeah. the heads of the dental colleges. They're very, very interested in what we're doing. And, you know, the word is spreading in, in India about saliva in, in a general sense. But I find that the meeting is is wonderful to bring together uh, people from all over the world. And, you know, as an event, in, in attending it in person, it was one of the most satisfying experiences I've had. I've had, you know, they made me feel so welcome. And, uh, you know, I, I think I was there probably five days or something like that. And I enjoyed every minute of it. So I thank you for, you know, for, for organizing the symposium and maintaining it every year. I mean, sometimes these meetings can just fizzle out, but the interest has grown and grown over, over the time. And um, yeah, very much looking forward to number five as well. <laughs> yes, yes. And just that we, we, we just need to keep going and we don't need to, we don't want to break this chain. Uh, that is something which I look forward. And yes, nothing would have been possible, at least in Salsi, for Salsi without you. It was, uh, it was absolutely not possible. That is one thing. So that is the primary thing I should Thank say. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So, so Dr. Paul, uh, I will not hold you much, but then uh, to we are coming to the concluding part of our uh, conversation. Uh, so, uh, to in that context, what would be your message to young researchers regarding a career in the saliva industry? Well, you know, first of all, if they're if they're involved in in you know developing new tools for diagnosis of diseases, they should at least consider saliva as an option. It may not always be the best choice. Uh, and, you know, sometimes blood is better than saliva. Sometimes saliva is better than blood. I think, as I mentioned, back in, in the year, oh boy, probably gone back to 2005 or something like that, we, we had a collaboration with Siemens. The, the, it wasn't Siemens at the time. It was a, a, a division of Siemens, but it was you know, eventually divested and into Siemens. And uh, they came to us with a project where they said, we have a biomarker that appears in the gut and it comes up into the saliva, but it never appears in the bloodstream. So a blood test won't work. You have to use saliva to get this particular blood uh, you know, biomarker to work for this particular disease. And we worked with them for quite a while. And then something happened at Siemens. They did a reorganization. People were fired and the whole thing mm. fell apart. But, I mean, it just does illustrate that, you know, it's kind of horses for courses. In some cases, we might not be able to use saliva. But I think if you're involved in a company that's developing new tools for diagnosis, you should at least consider saliva. And there are new opportunities. There are companies that are, you know, saliva only companies, you know, like ours, you know, like Orishur, like Saliva Diagnostics, but other companies like Salignostics in Israel that are developing a pregnancy test for, you know, using saliva and other companies in the COVID area that are that are developing COVID-19 tests that use saliva. And Wiley's going to talk a lot about, you know, the saliva direct assay that uses saliva. And she's done an excellent job of, of you know, making that test kind of the stand the standout test in the United States for testing i think maybe seven million specimens have been done uh at uh, using the saliva direct protocol so you know that that's that's a good illustration so i think it's you know as you as you're looking at careers in, in the in the diagnostic business you know it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a diagnostic company that's a saliva company but if All you right. get there if you get there always think about the possibility of using saliva as an option for for your company and try and have the management believe in saliva Thank you so much, Dr. Paul. And we are just waiting uh, for the uh, next Salsi to come and to listen fr uh, from you. The interesting session, your session is always very interesting and thought provoking and very, very uh, uh, insightful, I must say, that every time, at least uh, for me, every time I listen to your lecture, <laughs> I would learn something very new thing. And uh, <laughs> that's good. I mean, that that makes me feel good because you know that's that's what it's all about. My my role, you know, I I'm 67 years of age now. You know, and fairly soon I'm going to end up retiring. But before I retire, I want to leave a legacy, which is, you know. This guy developed a bunch of tools that help people. And, and really, that's what it's all about. And if other companies in the saliva business develop more tools 
then I think that's gonna that's gonna air help people and make things you know much much less invasive. One by the way, one of the things that is quite irritating for somebody in the saliva world is when somebody talks about a non-invasive blood test, because to me, <laughs> blood is not non-invasive. But you'll see yeah. that everywhere. They, they they'll talk about a non-invasive blood test for yeah. cancer or whatever. Yeah, the last yeah. time I had a needle, it it wasn't painless. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, it cannot be painless. I agree with you completely. And uh, thank you, Dr. Paul. It was wonderful talking to you. And we look forward to see you again in the International Saliva Summit of India, which we are organizing on January 27th and 28th, 2023. We'll go online this time. And hopefully in the coming years, we'll be, we'll be able to put together everything in place so that we again meet in person and i wait for that day very much <laughs> that will be wonderful thank you so much for having me and uh, i'm looking forward to salsi very very much thank you bye bye take care bye bye, bye for now